The Holy Tales. Hi, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories. When she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I long to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Hi, Holy. Now that you are up, can you please, please tell us a story from the great book? <sighs> this book is called the Bible. I will tell you the story only if you promise to listen carefully and answer a question at the end. Yes, yes, we promise. Millions and millions of years ago, God created earth and the heavens. At first, it was completely dark and covered with water. That would make life difficult, wouldn't it? So Earth did not have any life. This worried God. So on the first day, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. He called the light day and the dark night. Then he decided to make the sky. So on the second day, God made the sky. The very next day, God wanted land. So he said, Let there be land. And the land came out of the water. God then called the land earth and the water sea. With the light, the sky, the land and water, the earth looked so beautiful. But he wanted to make it look even better. So on the third day, he created plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. On the fifth day, God filled the sea with fish and plants. He also wanted birds to fly in the sky. He also filled the earth with animals, big and small. And finally, his biggest creation of all, man. He said that unlike animals, man would stand up tall and also have a soul. So God took some dust from the ground and created man out of it. He made man to take care of his creation. This was all done in just six days. And on the seventh day, God said, I need rest. He rested. Now there is a question for all of you. How many days did God take for his creation? I know, I know. Seven days. That's correct. Excellent, Tubby. Okay, now I am off to sleep again. See ya. Oh, so the three of you are back again. You never let me sleep. Please, don't sleep. We want to hear another story. Please tell us another story from the Bible. All right. This is the story of Adam and Eve. But once again, you must listen to the story very carefully. I am going to ask you a question at the end of it. After God made the earth, the sun and the moon, God made man. And he was very proud of his creation. The man he created, he called Adam. He gave Adam a soul and life so that he could take good care of the earth. 
He gave Adam a beautiful garden to live in, which became his home. This garden was called Eden. Eden was a huge garden with four rivers in it. Beautiful plants and trees started to grow in the garden, like apples, oranges, strawberries and grapes. Adam ate these whenever he was hungry. He drank water from the rivers whenever he was thirsty. God blessed Adam and asked him to take good care of the garden and everything in it. Adam named all the beautiful birds and animals and also took good care of them. Adam spent all his days eating the fruits and playing with these birds and animals in his garden. But he was alone and sometimes felt quite lonely. This made God really sad. He thought that he should probably create someone else who would be Adam's companion. So, he created Eve. Eve gave company to Adam and also helped him take care of the animals, birds and the garden. Eve was different from Adam and so God called her a woman. Adam and Eve started to live in Eden. They played with the animals and birds. They together took good care of the garden. And now, here is a question for all of you. What was Adam's home called? I know this one. It's Eden. You are absolutely right. Okay, I am feeling tired. I am off to sleep again. Bye-bye. <laughs> you three again? Will you ever let me sleep in peace? Oh, Holy, please don't sleep. We really want to hear a story from the Bible again. This story is about the fall of Adam and Eve. And you must listen carefully as I will ask you a question at the end of the story. Of all the animals God made, he made the snake the most cunning. One day, the snake asked Eve, Dear Eve, is it true that you cannot eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge? Eve replied, Yes, we can eat the fruit of any other tree, but this one. If we do, God says we will die. The snake said, That's silly. God has tricked you. If you eat the fruit, you will gain knowledge. But why would he lie to us? Because he doesn't want you to be wise like him. Eat it, is what I would say. Eve took some fruit from the tree and ate it. She took some for Adam too. As soon as they ate it, they realized they were not wearing any clothes. So they took some leaves and covered themselves. When God came, Adam and Eve hid behind some trees because they were ashamed of what they had done. What did you do? I told you not to eat the fruit of that tree. It's not my fault. Eve gave it to me. It is not my fault either. The snake tricked me. God was angry that they disobeyed him. So he sent them away from the garden. From that day onwards, Adam would have to hunt for food and things would not be easy anymore. And now, the question for all of you. Of all the animals, which was the most cunning? I know this! The snake was the most cunning of all! Well done! That is right. Okay children, it's time for my nap again. I see that the three of you are back again. Today, I shall tell you the story of Cain and Abel. So listen carefully. After God had thrown Adam and Eve out of Eden, they started living outside the garden. There they had two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel grew up to be a shepherd who looked after sheep. <laughs> and Cain became a farmer who worked on the land to grow food. One day, both brothers decided to make an offering to God. Cain offered his best produce 
while Abel offered his best sheep. God was more pleased with Abel's gift and did not even accept Cain's gift. Cain was very sad and also very angry and jealous of Abel. God warned Cain that there was sin in his heart. Cain did not listen and instead planned to kill his brother. He asked Abel to go for a walk and when they reached a lonely place, he killed Abel. When Cain returned, God sensed something was wrong and asked him, Where is Abel? Cain lied and said he did not know. You are lying, Cain. You have killed Abel. I cannot forgive you. You shall be punished. From this day onwards, you shall be a restless wanderer and no land will give you food. Cain knew if he left, his life would be in constant danger and difficulty. So he begged God to forgive him and not be so cruel. But God did not relent. He was very angry. However, God placed a special mark on Cain to make sure no one ever harmed him. Cain left and went to live in a land east of Eden. So I shall now ask my question. I hope you have all been paying attention. What did Cain and Abel offer God? I got it. Cain offered his best produce and Abel offered his best sheep. That is absolutely right. Oh, oh no, you three again? Anyway, today I will tell you a really interesting story of how God saved all the creatures and a good man named Noah. A long time had passed since Adam and Eve were created. The land was now full of wicked people. This made God very unhappy. There was only one good man called Noah. He blessed Noah for being a good person and said, I will destroy all bad and wicked people. Only you and your family will be saved. So he asked Noah to build a huge boat called the Ark. God then said, Bring your family and two of every kind of animal to the Ark. He also asked him to gather enough food to last for a very long time. He then told him that in seven days he would send rain which would go on for 40 days and 40 nights. The rain would bring a huge flood. Only Noah and his family and the animals on the boat would survive. Noah did everything that God had asked him to do. He spent many days building the ark. He gathered two animals of every kind gathered food and got inside the ark with his family. God sent the rains for 40 days and 40 nights. Noah and his family were safe inside the ark. After the rain had stopped, to know what was going on outside, Noah would send out a dove every day. But the dove would come back with nothing. One day, the dove came back to him with an olive leaf. No one knew that the earth was finally drying out. They stepped out of the boat after a year, very happy to have survived the flood. I hope you have been listening very carefully because this question is a little tough. Tubby if you answer this question correctly, I will sing along with you. Okay, here is a question. How did Noah know it was time to leave the ark? I know, I know. He sent out a dove and it came back with an olive branch. Very good. 
There you are. I am awake and ready to tell you a wonderful story from the Bible. Today, I will tell you the story of how God made the rainbow. Long ago, there was a time when the earth became full of bad people. God was unhappy. So he sent the rains for 40 days and 40 nights to clean earth of all the bad things. Every living creature on the earth was killed. Only Noah, his family and the animals in the ark survived. When Noah finally came out of his ark, he knew what he had to do. He built an altar for God and offered him many gifts. He thanked God for saving him and his family. After the flood was over, God promised that he would never destroy the earth again. The four different seasons, summer, winter, autumn and spring would come and go forever. He blessed Noah and said, The earth is now yours. Take good care of it so that no evil ever happens again. Noah would rule the earth as long as he lived. God told Noah everything about what should be done. Suddenly, a beautiful rainbow of seven colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red appeared in the sky. This colorful and bright rainbow was a sign of happiness after the dangerous flood. So every time there is a rainbow in the sky, people remember God's promise to Noah. And the question for today is, why did God make this rainbow? It is God's promise to the people that He would never destroy the earth again. There will always be a rainbow at the end of the rain. Correct! But I have another question today. What was the first thing that Noah did when he came out of the ark? Um, did he have a burger? Did he clean the boat? Did he dry his clothes? <laughs> no, he offered gifts to God for saving him and his family. Oh, Holy, we are so glad you are awake. Can you tell us a story, please? All right. Today, I shall tell you the story of the Tower of Babel. There was a time when the earth was filled with evil. So God decided to destroy everyone and everything except one good man, Noah and his family. Over time, the descendants of Noah spread around the world and settled in the land of Shinar. At that time, everyone spoke the same language. One day, the people of Shinar decided to make a great tower that would reach the heavens and a fine city out of bricks for themselves. They thought that by doing so, they would become very powerful and other people would envy them. They would no longer have to live in the countryside either. One day, God decided to visit. When he saw what the people were doing, he was very sad. The people were no longer loyal or pure-hearted. They had greed in their hearts. God knew that once the tower was built, there would be no end to their greed. Nothing could stop them. So God decided to confuse the language of all the people there. People would no longer be able to understand each other and the building of the tower came to a stop. The tower came to be called as the Tower of Babel, which got its name from the babbling sound everyone made when they were talking. The people of Shinar stopped building the tower and moved away in all directions. 
Now for the question. What was the name of the land when Noah's descendants settled? We know, we know. They settled in the land of Shinar, right? That is correct, children. Now I need to sleep again. Bye-bye. I am going to tell you a story about Father Abraham and God's promise to him. Oh, yes, yes. Tell us the story. We love the song and want to know the story behind it. Okay. Long, long ago, there was a city named Ur. A good man called Abraham lived there. Abraham truly believed in God. God saw this and was very happy because at this time, not many people believed in God. He said to himself, Abraham deserves to be rewarded for being such a good man. So one day, God came to him and asked him to go to another place far, far away. He said, I promise you, Abraham, that you and your family will be great and everyone on earth would be blessed because of you. Since Abraham trusted God and believed in him, he left Ur with his family. They traveled over hills and rivers and came to a land called Canaan. They camped by a big oak tree at Moray. There at Moray, God came to Abraham once again. This time he blessed Abraham and said, This land belongs to you and your children, and the world is a blessed place because you are such a good man. So Abraham built a beautiful altar for God and worshipped him. But God's gift worried Abraham. He said, I am getting old and have no children to enjoy your gift. God then took Abraham outside and asked him to look up at the sky. He said, Try and count the number of stars in the sky. Abraham started counting the stars. God blessed him and said, I will give you more children than you can count. Abraham believed God and was happy. Oh, is this why we are all children of Father Abraham? <laughs> Today's question is what did God promise Abraham? Oh, I think he promised to make Father Abraham the king of Canaan. No, silly. He promised him as many children as there were stars in the sky. So, he had zillions and zillions of children. Hello, children. I see you are back again. Yes, we want to hear a story from the Bible again. Oh, please, please tell us one. Okay, today's story is about Sodom and Gomorrah. So pay attention, children. A long time ago, Abraham, a good man, lived in Canaan with his family. His nephew Lot, however, took his family to go and live in Jordan, in the city of Sodom. Next to Sodom was a city called Gomorrah. The people in Sodom and Gomorrah were very wicked. They lied and had sin in their hearts. So God thought he would destroy the two cities. When Abraham got to know about it, he was very sad. His nephew Lot was living in Sodom and he did not want him to die. He decided to talk to God. He asked God, God, what if there are good people in Sodom? Would you want to destroy them? If there are 50 good people in Sodom, would you save the city for them? Yes, I will not destroy the city if I can find 50 good people. Forgive me, Lord. If there are 10 good people, would you still destroy the city? If I get 10 good people, I will not destroy the city. God knew why Abraham was scared. He also knew that only Lot and his family were the good people in Sodom. So he sent his angels to warn them. Soon, 
There was a storm in Sodom and Gomorrah. It rained fire and everything was destroyed. Lot and his family got away just in time and were saved. But Lot's wife, who was sad at leaving her home behind, looked back to see the city for one last time. So she turned into a pillar of salt. I will ask a question now. I hope you were listening very carefully. What was Abraham's nephew called? Oh, oh, this is easy. It was Lot. That is correct. Now, I need to get back to my nap. Good night, all. Hello, you naughty bookworms. You are very lucky that I am awake today. Hello, Holy. We cannot wait to hear another story from the Bible. Do tell us one. Today, I will tell you the story of Abraham, his son Isaac, and how God tested his love. At the end of it, I will ask a question, so listen very carefully. A long time ago, there was a man named Abraham who loved God very much. God had blessed Abraham and promised to make him great. The land of Canaan was promised to him and his children. A few years had passed and God wanted to see if Abraham still loved him. So he came before Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to give me your son as an offering on Mount Moriah. Abraham was scared because he loved Isaac very much, but he obeyed since he still loved and believed in God. So he took a donkey and two servants along with some chopped wood and his son Isaac up to the mountain. It took them three days to reach the mountain. After reaching the mountain, he told his servants to go and build an altar where he would offer his son to the Lord. Isaac, who had been watching all this, asked his father very innocently, Father, I can see that you're about to make an offering to the Lord, but where is the lamb? Abraham replied, Don't worry, son. God will give us a lamb. He then tied up Isaac and put him on top of the chopped wood. As he raised the knife to kill his son, an angel appeared. The angel said, Wait, Abraham, do not hurt the child. The Lord just wanted to see if you still loved him. But now he knows that you would kill your only beloved son for him. Abraham was grateful that the Lord had spared his son. When he looked up to thank the Lord, he saw a lamb. Abraham placed the lamb in the place of his son as an offering to God. Together, he and his son went back home happy. Okay, children, now for the question. What did God ask Abraham to do for him? Let me answer this one. God asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac to him. Very good, Gumbo. That is right. Today's story is about Isaac and Rebecca. A long time had passed since Abraham was blessed by God for being a good man. Abraham had become very old and his wife Sarah had died. Abraham knew that before he died, he would have to find his son Isaac a wife so that he would not be alone. So Abraham sent his most loyal servant to look for a wife for Isaac. The servant, along with camels who carried many gifts for the bride, were on their way to Mesopotamia. By the time they reached the town, it was evening. It was the time for women to fill their water jugs from the well. The servant was at a loss. He did not know which girl would be the right girl for Isaac, so he prayed to God to give him a clue. He decided he would ask for a drink from the women near the well, and the woman who would give water to his camel would be the woman that God had sent for Isaac. Even before he could finish praying, a beautiful woman came to the well. He said, could you give me a drink? And she said, 
Yes, I will give water to your camel too. At once the servant knew that this was the woman God had sent for Isaac. Her name was Rebecca. The servant told her about Isaac and asked if she would go to Canaan. She said yes, and after getting her father's blessings, she was on her way to meet Isaac. Isaac was praying when he saw the camels coming back. He ran to see his would-be wife. When he saw her, he knew he would love her all his life. They got married and had a very happy life. So today's question is this, what was the name of Isaac's wife? It was Rebecca, right? Yes, it was. Very good. You do pay attention. Now, off you go. Bye-bye. Hi, Holy. Now that you are awake, please, please tell us another beautiful story from the Bible. Of course I will. Only if you promise to answer my question at the end. Yes, yes, we promise. We love your stories. A long time ago, a good man called Abraham had a son called Isaac. Isaac grew up to be a young and handsome man. Abraham started looking for a wife for him so that he was not alone and could have children. He asked his loyal servant to find a wife for Isaac. The Lord helped them find Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel. Abraham's servant got Rebekah along with him to be married to Isaac. When Isaac was 60 years old, Rebekah gave birth to twin sons. The first son had red hair and had hair all over his body. He was called Esso, which meant hairy. The second son was born holding onto the heel of Esso. He was called Jacob, which means a cheat. Esso grew up to be a good hunter and he loved the countryside. Jacob was a quiet man and he usually stayed at home all by himself. One day, Jacob was cooking some bean soup. When Esso came back from hunting, he was very hungry and he said to Jacob, I'm very hungry, brother. Give me some soup. Jacob, who was very cunning and greedy, thought for a while and said, you can have the soup, only if you promise to give me your birthright. In those days, it was the eldest son who received the father's last blessings and more than half of his money after his death. Esso was so hungry that he promised Jacob his birthright without taking it very seriously. Jacob gave him some soup and bread, which Esso ate and left. So children, now answer my question. What were Isaac's twin sons called? I remember one. Um, the second one was called Jacob. And the first son was called, uh, e Esso, e Esso? Very good. I was just having this wonderful dream. Do you know who else had a dream? Jacob, the son of Isaac. Let me tell you about his dream today. Yes, yes, yes. Story time! All right, children, I will tell you the story, but you have to listen carefully because I will ask a question at the end of it. Are you ready then? Yes, we are! Okay, once upon a time, there was a man named Isaac who had married a woman named Rebecca. They led a very happy married life and had two sons, Esso and Jacob. At that time, the oldest son used to inherit most of a father's land and money. So though Esso was a hunter, since he was the older of the two, he got all of Isaac's money. Jacob was a shepherd. But Rebecca, their mother, loved Jacob more. So when Isaac died, Rebecca and Jacob tricked Esso out of all his money and property. Esso was very, very angry. He was so angry that Jacob had to run away from Canaan to save himself. He thought of going away to Mesopotamia. On his way, 
Jacob stopped at a lonely place to rest. As he fell asleep on the rocky place, he had a dream. In his dream, he saw a ladder that went up to the heavens and the angels were climbing that ladder. As Jacob looked more closely, he saw the Lord himself standing near the ladder. God said to Jacob, Jacob, I am the God of your grandfather and father. The land on which you are lying is going to be yours. You are one of the chosen people and you will have as many children and grandchildren as the sand on this ground. Jacob woke up happy. He said to himself, This land is surely holy. So he dropped some oil on the rock he was sleeping on and called it Bethel, the house of God. After that, he promised that if the God of his father and grandfather looked after him, then he would accept him as his God too. I hope you listen carefully. Here is my question. What did Jacob name the land that God promised him? Was it? Was it bad? Bethel. You are absolutely right. Now let me rest. Bye bye all. Well, hello. I was just going off to sleep. <sighs> Hi, Holy. We want you to tell us one more story from the Bible. Then you can go back to sleep again. We promise. All right, children. I will tell you a story from the Bible, but you have to listen carefully because I will ask a question at the end of it. Are you ready then? Oh, yes, we are! Yay! Story time! Once upon a time, there was a man named Jacob who had left his hometown after a fight with his brother Esau. On his way, he had a dream where the Lord had promised him the land of Bethel. After that, he promised that if the God of his father and grandfather looked after him, he would accept him as his God too. Jacob went to live with his mother's side of the family. He had two wives, Rachel and Leah, who had 12 sons. Jacob very soon became a rich man. After many years had passed, Jacob thought of going back to Canaan. So along with his whole family, he started his journey. The night before they crossed the promised land, Bethel, Jacob spent the night alone, praying to God. Suddenly, a stranger came and started fighting with him. Jacob and the stranger kept fighting all night. Finally, they stopped and the stranger asked Jacob his name. My name is Jacob. The stranger said, From now on, you will be called Israel. At that moment, Jacob understood that the person with whom he had been fighting all night was God. The next day, they reached Canaan and Jacob happily made up with his brother Esau with whom he had fought before they had left. I hope you listened carefully. Here is my question. What did God say Jacob's new name would be? Answer this holy? God said Jacob's new name would be Israel. You are right. Now I'm off to sleep again. Good night. There you are, children. I have been waiting to tell you this wonderful story from the Bible. I hope today's story is as wonderful as the rest. Absolutely. You're going to love this one. But do listen carefully. We promise. We promise. Today, the story I'm about to tell you is about Joseph's wonderful coat. Jacob had 12 sons from his two wives, Rachel and Leah. Of his 12 sons, he loved Joseph the most. When Joseph became 17 years old, his father gifted him a very special and beautiful coat for his birthday. It was made out of many colored threads and had long sleeves. It was a very special coat which was normally only given to the eldest son. 
When Joseph's brothers saw that their father had given him the special coat, they were very jealous and angry. Now Joseph would often have nice and wonderful dreams and he could almost always understand what each dream meant. Once he told his brothers the latest dream that he had had, he said, I dreamt that all of us were tying up bundles of wheat that we had harvested. While mine were straight and standing, yours bowed down to mine. His brothers were very angry. They said, Does that mean that you will rule over us? The dream made his brothers extremely angry and they also started hating him a lot. Joseph very soon had another dream. In this dream, the sun, the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to him. He rushed to his father to tell him all about his dream. As he told his dream to his father, Jacob got very angry and said, Son, do you really think that one day your mother, your brothers and I will bow down to you? This made Joseph very sad since he was just telling them about a dream he had had and he loved his brothers and his parents very much. Now that I am done with the story, I am going to ask the question, what did Jacob gift Joseph when he turned 17? Oh, I know, I know. He gifted him a multicolored coat. That is absolutely right. Hope you enjoyed the story. Now off you go. Bye bye. Oh, so you three are here again? What mischief have you been up to today? Oh, we have been very good, Holy. We just wanted to hear another story from the Bible. Okay, children. I will tell you a very sad story today. This is the story of how Joseph is sold to merchants. There was once a boy named Joseph who was given a wonderful coat of many colors by his father for his birthday. But his brothers were jealous of Joseph and his beautiful coat, so they planned to get rid of him. One day, Joseph's brothers had gone to a far away mountain with their sheep. So Jacob sent Joseph to see if his brothers needed anything. As Jacob was climbing the mountain, his brothers saw him from far away and thought of a way to get rid of him. They thought of killing him and throwing him into a well and telling their father that a wild animal had attacked and killed Joseph. The eldest brother, Reuben, however, said, Dear brothers, let us not kill him. Let us throw him in the well, where he will die of hunger in a few days anyway. Reuben did not want to kill his brother at all. In fact, he planned to save him later. The brothers agreed to Reuben's plan. As soon as Jacob came, they got a hold of him, took off his special coat and pushed him into the well. Then they all sat down to eat. As they were all eating, some merchants came by carrying spices that they were planning to sell in Egypt. Seeing the merchants, one of the brothers had an idea. He said, Instead of killing Joseph, let us sell him to these merchants. In this way, we will not be killing him. After all, he is our brother. The others agreed. They then pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him to the merchants. When the brothers returned home, they showed their father Joseph's special coat, which they had soaked in goat's blood to make it look like Joseph was attacked by a wild animal. Now for the question, children. Which of the brothers did not want to kill Joseph, but save him later? Let me think, Holy. Was it Reuben? Yes, indeed it was Reuben. Very good, Freckles. I have to think of which story to tell you tomorrow. So long. Till next time. Bye-bye. Oh, Holy. We are here to hear another story from the Bible. Can you please, please tell us one? All right. I will. But you must pay attention because I will ask a question at the end of the story. Will you listen carefully? We always do! Once upon a time, 
there was a man named Joseph. Unfortunately, Joseph's brothers hated him because they were jealous of him. So they sold him off to a merchant called Potiphar and told Jacob, their father, that Joseph had been killed by wild animals. Now Potiphar was an important man in the king of Egypt's court. He was in charge of the royal guards. Potiphar gave Joseph some work in his house. Soon Joseph became so good at it that Potiphar put him in charge of his house. This made Potiphar's wife jealous. She knew Joseph was special and she did not want him in her house. She told her husband lies about Joseph, so he was sent to prison. In the prison, the jail keeper saw that Joseph had some special qualities, so put him in charge of the prisoners. Among the prisoners were the king's butler and baker. One day, both of them had strange dreams and went to Joseph to know about them. Joseph said, Tell me your dreams. Maybe I can understand them. The butler said, In my dream, I had three bunches of grapes and squeezed them into the king's cup for him to drink. What could it mean? Joseph said, Hmm, three bunches means three days. Within three days, the king will forgive you and you will leave the prison. The baker said, I, I, I was carrying three baskets of pastries for the king, but on the way, birds came and pecked them. Joseph replied, I'm sorry, this means that you'll die in three days and the king will not forgive you. Just like Joseph had said, the baker was not forgiven and the butler was. The butler went back to work for the king and forgot all about Joseph. So here is the question. Other than Joseph, who else had the king sent to prison? Oh, I know this one. It was a butler and a baker. That's right. I hope you loved the story. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Dear God, you three have woken me up again. Please do not sleep, Holy. We really want to hear a story from the Bible again. Will you please tell us one? Okay. But I will ask a question at the end. So listen carefully. We promise we will. A young man, Joseph, was sent to prison by the king of Egypt for no fault of his own. He lived in the prison for two years. One day, the king had a very strange dream. He dreamt that seven fat cows came out of a river and ate all the grass in the fields. Then seven thin cows came out of the same river and ate the seven fat cows, but stayed as thin as before. The king was confused. He called all his clever ministers, but none of them could understand what the king's dream meant. The king's butler, who had spent some time in prison with Joseph, said, Your Highness, when I was in prison, there was a man who understood my dream. It turned out what he told me was true. He is very wise. Maybe you should ask him. So Joseph was called. After the king had told him his dream, Joseph said, Your dream is about the future. The seven fat cows you saw are seven coming years when you will have a good harvest. However, the seven years after that will be dry and there will be no rain. So I think you should start storing the extra harvest for the next seven years without rain. The king was very impressed. He said, You are truly wise. Joseph said, My God speaks through me. I only say what he tells me. The king was so happy with Joseph that he made him the highest officer, only second to the king himself. So Joseph was very rich. He wore expensive clothes, moved around in chariots, and people bowed to him in respect wherever he went. Now, I will ask you the question. I hope you were listening carefully. How many
many years did Joseph live in the prison? I can answer this. Joseph lived in the prison for two years, right? Yes, that is right. Now I need to sleep. Bye for now. Hello, children. Nice to see you again. Hi, Holy. We are ready to hear a nice story from the Bible again. Can you tell us one? Okay. This is a happy story of Joseph who sees his family again after a long time. A young man, Joseph, had been sold off as a slave by his brothers. He ended up in Egypt in prison. Now Joseph had helped the king of Egypt understand a dream he had had. Because of this, Joseph was made a very important man in Egypt. The king had dreamt that there would be seven years of good harvest followed by seven years of no rain at all. And like in his dream, the following seven years saw a good harvest and there was a lot of food. Joseph was put in charge of properly storing all the extra food in every region of Egypt. The following seven years saw no harvest at all. While the regions around Egypt had problems, Egypt had enough food. Soon people started moving to Egypt to buy food. Among these people were Joseph's brothers. When Joseph saw them, he recognized them immediately, but they could not. Joseph accused them of being spies. They said they were not, but Joseph refused to believe them till they got their youngest brother Benjamin as proof. Joseph said that because he really wanted to see his brother Benjamin again. His brothers soon came back to Egypt with Benjamin. As they were leaving the palace, Joseph slipped a silver goblet into Benjamin's bag. He told the palace guards to arrest his brother and charged him with stealing from the palace. Joseph ordered, This thief will stay in Egypt as a slave. The other brothers pleaded, No, please don't do that. Our father will be heartbroken. Please take one of us instead. On hearing his father's name, Joseph was sad. He could not pretend any longer. He told his brothers who he really was and asked them to bring Jacob to meet him as soon as possible. So Jacob and the whole family came to Egypt. Now for my question, what was the name of Joseph's youngest brother? We know! We know! His name was Benjamin! That is right! Hello! Today I will tell you the story of Moses, a little boy who was saved by the Egyptian princess. A long, long time ago, there was a small city called Goshen. There was a time here when the rulers of Egypt wanted to kill all the babies who were born in Goshen. A woman who lived there gave birth to a fine baby boy. The mother tried to save her son. For almost three months, the mother was able to save her son from the pharaoh. But she could not hide him any longer. She could not bear the thought of having her baby killed in front of her eyes. So she knew she had to save him somehow. She thought of a plan and started to weave a basket. The basket was woven in such a way that no water could leak into it and hence would always float and never sink. After she was done weaving, she put her precious son in it and floated the basket among the reeds by the river. The river in which the boy was floated was the same river where the pharaoh's daughter used to take a bath. That day too she was taking a bath with few of her friends when she discovered this beautifully woven basket floating by. When she looked inside the basket, to her amazement, she saw a beautiful baby boy 
She felt very sorry for the crying baby and said, I am going to keep him and call him Moses. Thus Moses was saved from getting killed by the pharaohs. Moses grew up in the pharaohs' palace and as he grew up, he learned all the wisdom of Egypt. In spite of growing up in the palace, he loved the people of Israel and he would go on to free them from slavery. Let's see whether you have been listening carefully. Where did the Pharaoh's daughter find Moses? Oh, she found him in a basket in the banks of the river. Very, very good. Do tell us another story about Moses. You want to listen to a story about Moses again? Alright, I will tell you the story of how God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Moses was the prince of Egypt who lived in the Pharaoh's palace for 40 years. In order to save the people of Israel from slavery, he had run away and he started living in the desert. There he lived as a shepherd and herded his own flock of sheep. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. When he saw the burning bush, Moses noticed a very strange thing. He saw the bush was not burning up. Suddenly, he heard God's voice calling him from the bush. Moses? Moses? God wanted him to come near the bush and he asked him to remove his sandals as Moses was standing on holy ground. God said, I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Moses immediately hid his face and could not look at God. God told him that he had come to save the people of Israel from slavery. He told Moses that he needed his help to bring them out from Egypt. He asked Moses to tell the people that he was sent by God to rescue them. But Moses was worried that they would not believe him. God said, I will send your brother Aaron to help you. Moses and Aaron together went to Goshen and talked to the leaders of Israel. They believed Moses and Aaron. Now, let me see if you listen to the story I just told you. I will ask each of you a question. Tabi, why was Moses on Mount Horeb? He was attending to his flock of sheep. Absolutely. Now, Gumbo, who called Moses from the burning bush? Um, God? Duh, of course. Freckles, why did Moses hide his face? Because Moses was ugly? <laughs> no, silly. Because Moses could not look upon the face of God. Story time! Okay. Now sit down. Today I will tell you another story about Moses. A long, long time ago, the people of Israel were slaves at the hands of the Pharaoh in Egypt. God asked Moses to free his people. Moses and his brother Aaron visited the Pharaoh in his palace and said, God has sent me to you. Release the people of Israel. The Pharaoh of Egypt did not believe him and was very angry. In his anger, he made the people of Israel suffer even more. Not knowing what to do, Moses prayed to God. God heard his prayers and said, Go back to the palace and show the king the signs I have blessed you with. Aaron and Moses went back to the palace. Aaron threw down his shepherd's staff and it turned into a snake. 
the magicians of the king did the same thing. But to everyone's amazement, Aaron's staff swallowed up the magician's snake. The pharaoh was unmoved. He did not believe God's message and did not let the people go. God asked Moses to dip the staff in the river Nile. This would turn the water into blood. Moses and Aaron did exactly what they were told. There was no water left to drink and all the fish died. But still, the Pharaoh did not believe them. Seven days later, God sent Moses and Aaron to the palace of the Pharaoh. They once again told the Pharaoh that he should release the people of Israel. He did not listen to them. So Aaron held his staff over the river and immediately frogs came up and covered the whole of Egypt. Seeing this, the Pharaoh called Moses and said, If you take away the frogs, I will let your people go. Moses did this. But the Pharaoh went back on his word and still did not let the people of Israel go. Please, Holy, today I will ask the question. Okay, go ahead. Gumbo and freckles, how many eyes are there in the word Mississippi? Four? Five? That's a silly question, Tubby. Okay, children. Now my question. What did Aaron's staff do when he threw it on the floor? It turned into a snake. Oh, you children have come back to listen to another story from the Bible? Yes, we want to hear another beautiful story from the Bible, Holy. Yes, and we know we have to answer one question at the end of the story. Absolutely. Well, let us start with today's story. A long time ago, the Lord had sent Moses and his brother Aaron to Egypt to free the people of Israel from slavery. The Lord punished the Egyptians by sending them plagues where everybody got sick and many died. During the final plague, the eldest son in every Egyptian family died. But the Lord made sure that the plague passed over the Israelite families. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and said, This month is to be the first month of the year for the Jews. All the people of Israel should be told. God also told Aaron and Moses that on the tenth day of the month, every man must choose one lamb or a young goat for his family to eat. And if his family is too small, then he should share it with his neighbor's family. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, all the Israelites should mark their doorposts at the top of their doors with blood. That night, they must eat roasted meat with bitter herbs and bread made with yeast. They must also make sure that they do not leave any food until morning. If any was left over, it must be burned. In the morning, all the Jews should be dressed for travel. This particular fortnight of the first month would be considered as the Passover festival for the Jews to honor the Lord. That night, the Lord would go through the land of Egypt and punish all the bad Egyptians. The blood on the doorposts would be a sign to mark the houses in which the Jews lived. The Lord would see these and pass over these houses. Since that day, all Jews celebrate the Passover every year, even today. Who will answer my question today? I will! I will! Alright, the Jews celebrate the Passover festival to honor whom? The Lord! for saving them from slavery. Excellent! Hello, children! I see you are back again. Yes, we are! We are here for a story from the Bible. Holy, can you please tell us one? Of course I will. 
but you have to promise to listen carefully because at the end of the story, I will ask you a question. We promise to listen carefully. Once upon a time, the king of Egypt did not let the Lord's people, the Israelites, who were slaves, leave Egypt. As punishment, the firstborn child of the king of Egypt was taken away by the angel of death. The king was very, very sad and he ordered Moses, the savior of the Israelites, to take all the Israelites and leave Egypt. The Hebrews traveled day and night. During the day, they were led by the pillar of cloud and in the night, pillar of fire. This way, none of them could lose their way. After the Israelites had left, the king realized what he had done. Anger and the need for revenge had blinded him to everything else. He ordered his troops, Get back all the slaves and punish them one by one. So the king's soldiers were on their way on chariots and horses. The Israelites had reached the Red Sea when they saw the cloud of dust made by the Egyptian soldiers coming their way. Everyone was scared. In front of them was the sea and behind them were the soldiers who would kill them. They had no escape. The Israelites cried out to Moses. You have tricked us. You have led us to our deaths. Moses said, Do not worry. The Lord is with us. He raised his hands and parted the sea to make a narrow, dry path. The Israelites hurried along this path. The Egyptian soldiers, seeing this, also hurried along the dry path in the sea. But as soon as the king's army entered the dry path, the water rolled back, drowning all the Egyptian soldiers. I hope you were paying attention. This is a question. Which sea were the Israelites in front of? Oh, this one is easy. They were in front of the Red Sea, right? Yes, that is right, Tubby. Very good. Now I want to sleep. Bye all! Story time! Story, Story time! <sighs> okay, so today's story will be about how Moses helped the people of Israel escape through the sea. A long time ago, when the people of Israel were slaves to the Pharaoh of Egypt, they tried to escape, but they were left trapped between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea. They cried out to God for help. Moses, who was with them, lifted his staff over the sea and God had asked him to. Moses said, Let the sea part. Suddenly, the wind split the water into two halves and the water formed a wall on either side. The seabed was completely dry. Following Moses, the people of Israel walked through the sea to safety. The Egyptian soldiers were chasing the people of Israel but the wheels of their chariots fell to the ground. Not knowing what to do, they started running after them. Just then, Moses lifted his staff again and the sea returned like magic, drowning the Egyptian soldiers. The people of Israel and Moses traveled for three long months and arrived at Mount Sinai. God came to Moses and said, I will soon appear to the people of Israel on this mountain. Three days later, all the people of Israel came to the mountain to meet God. God had come down to the earth in fire. Sinai was completely wrapped in smoke. God called Moses to the mountaintop 
and spoke to him for 40 days. He told him about all the laws that the people of Israel should obey. These were written on two stone tablets called the Ten Commandments. This was an exciting story, especially the part where the sea is divided into two halves. Children, first, answer my question. So, for how long was Moses on Mount Sinai? I know this one. He was there for 40 days. Wake up, Holy! It's story time! <sighs> oh, you children are here. I fell asleep waiting for you. Anyway, let us start with today's story. And you, of course, know that you have to answer my question at the end. Yes, yes, we know. We always listen to your stories carefully. Long time ago, Moses and Aaron were sent by God to free the Israelites from slavery from the hands of the Egyptian pharaohs. After a lot of difficulty, the Jews were able to free themselves with the help of the Lord. They wanted to be free but were afraid to face the problems of the journey. They had to cross a huge desert before they could reach the land that God had promised them. It took many days for the Jews to cross the desert. In the desert, they had no food to eat and all of them were starving. They went and complained to Moses and Aaron. They asked all of them to stand before the Lord. The Lord heard their complaints and appeared to them in the middle of the desert. The Lord spoke to the people and promised them, By sunset, you will have meat to eat, and by morning, you will have all the bread you want. In the evening, a large flock of quail came and covered the area where the people were camping. So the people got all the meat they needed. In the morning, there was something thin and flaky lying all over the ground. The people wondered what it was. Moses told them, This is manna, the food that Lord has sent for you to eat. The people gathered enough for everyone. That is such a beautiful story. Yes, the Lord helps everyone in their bad times as long as they have faith. So the question for today is, who did the people of Israel go to with their complaints? I know this one. They went to Moses and Aaron. Fantastic. Well, that's all for today, children. Bye-bye. <sighs> oh, hi, children. Hello, Holy. Wake up, wake up. Yes, yes, I know. It's story time, and I have to tell you yet another story from the Bible, but... We have to answer a question at the end of the story, which we will. Come on, Holy, start the story. Today I will tell you a story about how the Lord helped the people of Israel get water. Long time ago, soon after the people of Israel escaped from slavery, in the hands of the Egyptian pharaoh, they were going to the land which God had promised them. But before they reached the promised land, they had to travel through a huge desert. The desert was so big that it took them days to cross it. The desert had no water and the people of Israel were dying of thirst. They went to Moses and complained. Moses said, why are you all grumbling? Why are you doubting the Lord's power? But the people were very thirsty and they continued to complain and complain. Moses prayed to the Lord and told him about the complaints of the people. He was afraid that the Israelites would hurt him because of thirst. Lord ordered Moses, Walk ahead of the people with your staff. I will appear to you in front of a rock in Mount Sinai. He asked Moses to strike the rock with his staff and that water would come out of it for the people to drink. 
Moses did as he was told, and immediately water came out of it, which the people drank to their heart's content. Thank you, Holy, for telling us this wonderful story. So, what is today's question? Where would the Lord appear in front of the leaders and the people of Israel? In front of a rock at Mount Sinai. Well done, Tubby. Uh, I feel tired. I must go back to sleep. Bye, Holy. Hello there. You are back again? Hi, Holy. We really want to hear a story from you. Please tell us one. All right. I will tell you a story from the Bible. But you have to listen carefully since this is an important story. And as always, at the end of the story, I will ask a question. We promise to listen carefully. All right. A long time ago, the king of Egypt had told Moses to take all the Israelites and leave Egypt. The people followed Moses out of Egypt. However, the king's soldiers followed them as they were leaving and tried to kill them. But Moses saved them and instead all the Egyptian soldiers died. This story is about Moses, the lawgiver. Moses led the Israelites, or the Hebrews, God's chosen people, to the mountain of Sinai where the Lord had first spoken to him. It took them three months to reach Mount Sinai. There God gave him two tablets with laws, also known as commandments, written on them to him. The first tablet was about the duties of the people towards God. It said that they must not worship other gods, they must be respectful towards their parents, they must keep the God's name holy, they must also keep God's day, the Sabbath, holy. The second tablet had duties of the people towards each other. It said that they must not kill, they must not be unfaithful with each other, they must not steal, they must not tell lies, they must not be jealous of other people. That day, God made an arrangement with his people that till the time they all faithfully follow these laws, the Ten Commandments as he called it, he too would be there for them, protecting them from all harm. I hope you were listening carefully. This is my question. How many tablets did God give Moses on the mountain of Sinai? I know the answer to this one. God gave Moses two tablets on the mountain of Sinai. Why tablets? Didn't they have books or paper? That is absolutely right, Tubby. And no, they didn't have books in those days. Now I will go back to sleep. See you later, children. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, children. Hello, Holy. It's time for you to tell us a story. Yes, it's story time. Well, today I shall tell you a story about how God was angry with the Israelites and thought of punishing them. Long ago, the people of Israel found it very difficult to follow the first commandment of God. It was hard for them to worship a God who could not be seen. They needed to learn how to do it. So they all went to Aaron, Moses' brother, and told him to make a God for them. This would make it easier for them to worship. So Aaron said, Bring me all the gold earrings that your wives, daughters, and sons are wearing. The people got him all that he asked for. Aaron melted the earrings and poured them into a mold and made a golden calf. He also built an altar in front of the calf and said, There shall be a festival to honor the Lord. The next morning, the people gathered to honor the golden calf. This angered God because the people had not followed his commandment of not worshipping idols. He wanted to punish them for not listening to him and breaking the first commandment. 
Moses pleaded to God not to be angry with them and that he would go and talk to the people himself. Moses came to the place where the people were worshipping the golden calf. He took the golden calf, melted it, ground it into fine powder and mixed it with water. Then he made the people of Israel drink it till no signs of the idol remained. Now you know children that you should listen to what God tells you and try not to disobey him. Yes, we know and we all love God. So today's question is, what did Aaron make out of the gold earrings? He made a golden calf for the people to worship. Very good Freckles. Wake up Holy, it's time for you to tell us another story from the Bible. Come on, don't be so lazy. Let us hear today's story. Alright, alright, I will tell you. You children never let me sleep. Yes, now tell us a story. So children, today's story is about the death of Moses, the savior of the people of Israel. What? He dies? How can he die? Wasn't he loved by God? Yes, he was. But he was a human being, not immortal. Now, let's not waste any more time and start with the story. A long time ago, Moses saved the people of Israel from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians and led them to the land that God had promised them. Before they could enter the promised land, God said, Moses, I cannot let you enter the promised land because you did not do all that I asked you to do. However, God showed him the whole land from one end to the other before he died. Moses died in a valley called Moab where the Lord buried him. But to this day, no one knows the exact place where he was buried. Moses was 120 years old when he died. He was still very strong with very good eyesight. The people of Israel mourned Moses for 30 days. Before Moses died, he appointed Joshua to be the next leader of the people. Joshua was one of his followers whom the people liked. He was very wise and strong. Moses was indeed a wonderful man. He did such great things for the people of Israel. Yes, he was a great man. There has never been a man of God in Israel like Moses. Lord has spoken to him face to face. He showed the Israelites such great and wonderful things. Now children, answer my question. What was the name of the valley where Moses died? The name of the valley was Moby. Not Moby, silly. It was Moab. Excellent, Freckles. You are a good girl. Well, I am off to sleep again. I shall meet you again later. Bye-bye. See you. Hello, Holy. Oh, uh, hi, children. It's story time, Holy. Wake up, wake up. You have to tell us another story from the Bible. Oh, and yes, we know we have to answer a question at the end of the story. <laughs> Good. So now we shall start with the story. A long time had passed since Moses, who had saved the Israelites from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, had died in the valley of Moab. It was now his disciple, Joshua, who led the people of Israel into the promised land. After Moses' death, the Lord spoke to Joshua and told him how important it was to keep the law. Joshua got ready with the people, crossed River Jordan and entered the promised land. Joshua was a very strong and wise man and no one could defeat him. God promised Joshua that he would never leave him and would always be with him like he was with Moses. So Joshua was made the leader of the Israelites 
and he made a promise to God that he would obey the laws, the commandments put down by him. God said, Read the book of law day and night, and also while you worship me. This will help you to do well wherever you go. God was with him all the time, supporting him. Joshua was never afraid and he never felt sad. He was strong in mind and very bold in his actions. Wow! Joshua was a strong man and very smart too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now you children need to be smart enough to answer my question. Well, we are very smart, Holy. What's the question? Who led the Israelites into the Promised Land? That is such an easy question, Holy. It was Joshua. He was Moses' disciple. I wanted to see how much attention you were paying. Well, I feel sleepy. I'll go for my nap now. See ya, children. Bye-bye. Hi, children. I was waiting for you to tell today's story. Today I shall tell you a very interesting story about Joshua and his people and how bravely they fought with the people of Jericho. Yay! It is always so nice to hear such beautiful stories from you, Holy. Come on, Holy, start with the story. I cannot wait anymore. Long, long time ago, there was a city called Jericho which the people of Israel had to cross to enter the promised land. The Israelites had already found out that the people of Jericho were afraid of them. So they prepared for a fight. The people of Israel carried the covenant box before they went for the battle. The covenant box was a gold-covered wooden box fixed to two poles. It had in it the Ten Commandments written on two stone slabs. The box reminded them that God was always with them. The gates of Jericho were kept shut and guarded to keep the Israelites out. Before the battle, God spoke to Joshua and said, I will give Jericho to you with its entire kings and its soldiers. If you and your people follow my orders. Joshua went to fight the battle with seven priests, his people and the covenant box. For six days they marched around the city as God had ordered them to do. On the seventh morning they marched around the city seven times. During the last round, the seventh round, the priests blew the trumpet and as soon as the men heard it, they gave a loud shout. The walls of the city fell to the ground. The army went up the hill into the city and captured it. Now you know children how bravely Joshua fought with his people against the people of Jericho. He could only do this because he followed the orders of the Lord. Also because Joshua was a strong and brave man. So what is the question for today, Holy? What was the gold-covered wooden box called? It was the covenant box. It had the Ten Commandments written down on two stone tablets. Excellent, Gumbo. Well said. Now it's time for my nap. I will see you kids soon. Bye, Holy. Hello, children. Hi, Holy. It is time for you to tell us another story from the Bible. I will, of course, tell you a story. But I am sure you know that you have to answer my question at the end of it. Yes, we know that. Come on, now start with the story. We can't wait anymore. Long, long time ago, after the fall of Jericho, the Israelites had many more victories with Joshua as their leader. Years passed and Joshua grew old. At the end of his life, he gave a strong challenge to the people to keep. He got all the people of Israel at a place called Sheshem and told them to worship the Lord and obey Him in everything. He also said, If you are not willing to serve the Lord, 
then you can choose your own God today. But my family and I will serve the Lord. The people of Israel were afraid of the Lord, and so they promised Joshua that they would never leave the Lord to serve other gods. They knew that it was the Lord who had set them free when they were slaves in Egypt. Joshua told them that the Holy Lord would not forgive their sins if they chose to worship any other god. If they left him, the Lord would punish them very severely. The people of Israel pledged to Joshua that they would only serve the Lord, worship him, and also obey all his commands. So Joshua asked them to remove all the images of the other gods that they had and worship only the Lord. The people of Israel followed everything Joshua asked them to do. That was a nice story, but holy, why would the Lord be angry if the people worshipped other gods? That is because he was the one who saved the people of Israel from the hands of Egyptians. Well, now answer my question. Where did Joshua meet the people of Israel and promise them to obey the Lord? The place was called uh, Sheshim? No, silly. It was called Sheshim. Ah, Tubby. I was having the most wonderful nap. Hello, Holy. We are so happy to see you awake. Now that you are up, you have to tell us a story from the Bible, please. All right, all right. Calm down. I will tell you all a wonderful story, but you have to answer a question at the end of it. If you do, I have a surprise for you. That is great, Holy. We will listen very carefully. We promise. Great. Then I will start today's story. It is about Mikah. Long time ago, there lived a man named Mikah. Mikah was a very loving man who lived in a small town in Judah. He loved God dearly and could not tolerate it when God's commandments were not being followed by his people. The people of the town where he lived were slowly moving away from God. They were becoming very greedy, telling lies and tricking other people. In those times, each family had land to grow crops. But when the crops did not grow properly, they would have to borrow money from other people to buy seeds to grow and also to buy food to eat. These people would ask for a lot of money in return. And if this money was not paid back, then their lands were taken away and their families were sold as slaves. Even the priests were of no help. They twisted God's laws as and when they wanted to and tricked the poor people. Micah was sad to see that the rich were getting richer and the poor people were getting poorer. He warned everyone. God does not like your ways. You will be punished. But their people did not care. They thought God would protect them. Micah then said, God will leave the temple. Jerusalem will be gone. There will be a forest in its place. But in the future, God's messenger will come from Bethlehem to save Israel. What was the name of the loving man who loved God dearly? I can answer this holy. The loving man was named Mikal. Freckles, dear, that is right. Hi, holy. We are here to listen to a story from the Bible. Please tell us one. Yes, I will. But you have to listen carefully as I will ask a question at the end of the story. We will listen carefully, we promise. All right then. Today I am going to tell you the story of the call of Gideon. As time passed, people forgot their God and had started praying to other gods. This made God angry and sad. So he sent the army of Midianites to punish them. The Midianites were strong tribesmen who raided their farms and stole their crops and animals. For seven years, the Midianites kept going to the city of the Israelites and attacking them and destroying their farms. The Israelites were tired and hurt. 
So after seven years, they finally went to the god of their ancestors. They prayed. Lord, we are foolish people. Please forgive us and help us in our time of need. God relented and visited Gideon, a poor farmer's son. God said, Gideon, you are to drive the army of Midianites out of the city. But first, you must destroy every place of worship of other gods. If you do that, I promise you will win. Gideon promised to drive out the Midianites. He had a small army of only 300 people. He was scared that the soldiers would not be enough to defeat the strong Midianites. Gideon knew that God was on their side and also he was clever. He thought of attacking the Midianites' camp at night. He gave each of his soldiers a trumpet and a torch hidden in a jug. As night set, the army of Gideon got ready to attack. On his signal, the soldiers broke the jugs and blew the trumpets. All the noise and the lights gave an impression that a very big army was attacking. The Midianites got scared and ran away and never came back. So, are you ready for the question? Yes, we are! Who did God choose to drive out the Midianites? I know this answer. God chose Gideon. That is right. Very good. Bye-bye. Uh, Hi, Holly. We are back to hear another story from the Bible. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I've already thought of a story to tell you. Which one, Holy? Tell us! Today, I will tell you another story of Gideon, how brave and strong he was. Yes, yes! Come on, I cannot wait to hear it! Long time ago, Gideon, the son of Joash, was visited by an angel who told him that the Lord had chosen him to save the people of Israel from the Midianites. As time passed, people forgot their God and had started praying to other gods. This made God angry and sad. Hence, he sent the army of Midianites to punish them. The Midianites were strong tribesmen who raided their farms and stole their crops and animals. One night, the Lord himself appeared to Gideon and asked him to destroy the idol of the goddess Asherah that Joash, his father, had built. The Lord ordered him to use the image of Asherah for firewood. Gideon set out with ten of his servants to do exactly what the Lord had told him to do. He was only afraid of what his family and the people in the town would do when they found out. Next morning, when the people found the broken idol, they were very angry. They soon found out that all of it was done by Gideon. They went to Joash's house to kill Gideon. Joash said, If Asherah is really a goddess, then let her fight for herself. She did not do anything when her idol was being destroyed. By saying this, Joash saved his son from getting killed by the people. Such a wonderful story! I loved it! Yes, yes, I loved it too! Me too! <laughs> now children, my question is, what was the name of the goddess whose idol Gideon destroyed? It was Goddess Asherah! Very good, Tubby! I am a good boy! Alright, alright, you are all good children! Now let me get some sleep! or else I won't be able to tell you another story. Bye, children! Hello, children! Hi, Holy! Today I will tell you a story about a man called Gideon, who, with God on his side, fought the battle against the Midianites with only 300 men. What? Only 300 men? Yes. Now do listen carefully. Long time ago, Gideon, a man chosen by God to fight the Midianites had camped with all his men beside a spring called Harod. The Midianites, on the other hand, 
were camping in the valley below Moray Hill in the north. The Lord spoke to Gideon and said, You do not need all these to defeat the Midianites. They might think that you have won the battle without my help. So God asked Gideon to get rid of all the men who were afraid. So 20,000 men went back and 10,000 stayed. God was still not satisfied. He said, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water. There I will tell you who should go with you and who should not. Choose everyone who laps up the water with his tongue like a dog. Don't take anyone who gets down on his knees to drink. Gideon did whatever the Lord asked him to do. Only 300 men took water in their hands and lapped it. So Gideon took only those 300 men to fight the battle against the Midianites and the rest was sent back home. Gideon divided 300 men into three groups and gave each man a trumpet and a pot with a flaming torch inside it. Gideon took his 100 men and came to the edge of the enemy camp, blew the trumpets and broke the pots. The other two groups did the same and shouted, Victory for the Lord! While Gideon's men blew the trumpet, the Lord made the enemy attack each other with their own swords. This is how Gideon defeated the Midianites with only 300 men. Praise the Lord! Yes! Calm down, Tubby. Now answer my question. How many men were afraid and left Gideon? I know! 20,000 men left Gideon because they were afraid. Excellent! Now let me sleep, children. See ya! Be good! Hi, Holy. Now that you are up, can you please, please tell us another story from that wonderful book called the Bible? <sighs> I will, only if you promise to listen carefully and answer a question at the end. Yes, we promise. Many years had passed since the people had escaped from Egypt. The people of Israel lived as a nation. In time, Israel began to worship idols again. So God gave them enemies. These enemies were the Philistines. The people of Israel then worshipped an idol called Dagon. This god had a fish's head on a man's body. The Philistines took charge of all the arms that the Israelites had. This made them unable to fight any longer. They also robbed Israel of their crops which made them starve. They prayed to God and cried for help. God heard their prayers and came to their rescue. Among the tribe of Dan lived a man named Manoah. One night an angel came to Manoah's wife and said, You will give birth to a son and your son will grow up and save Israel from the Philistines. However, there is only one condition. Your son must never drink any wine. That his hair must grow long and will be a Nazarite priest. Soon after, Manoah's wife gave birth to a son and she named him Samson. He became the strongest man on earth. He was so strong that he did not need an army. All the things he did to set his people free and save them from the Philistines, he did alone. One day, Samson fell in love with a Philistine woman and wanted to marry her. Samson went to his father and told him so. This made both his parents extremely unhappy. But they did not know that God was using this marriage to rescue the people of Israel from the Philistines. Didn't Samson have a girlfriend called Delilah? I know he had one. That is a story for another day. First, answer my question. Why 
were Samson's parents unhappy about his choice for a wife? They were angry because she was a Philistine who were their enemies. Correct. Now go. I will tell you another story tomorrow. Hello, Holy. It's time for you to tell us a story from the Bible. <sighs> yes. Today, I will tell you a story about a great woman called Ruth. But I am sure you know what you have to do after I'm done with my story. Yes, we know. At the end of the story, you will ask us a question which we have to answer correctly. Absolutely. So let's not waste any more time. Let's begin with the story. A long time ago, there was a famine in Israel. A man named Elimelech from Bethlehem went with his family to live in the country of Moab. His wife's name was Naomi and they had two sons called Malon and Chilion. After a few years had passed, Elimelech died. His sons married two Moabite women called Oprah and Ruth. About ten years later, Malon and Chilion died too. So Naomi was left with two of her daughters-in-law and no husband or sons. Sometime later, Naomi heard that the Lord had blessed Israel, there were good crops again and the famine was over. She decided that it was time to return to Bethlehem, her hometown. Before she was leaving, she told her daughters-in-law not to leave their land and stay back with their mothers. But both the women wanted to go with her to Bethlehem in Israel. Naomi tried to make them understand why they should stay back and not go with her. Finally, she could make Oprah understand who decided to stay back. But Ruth refused to leave her. Naomi said to her, Your sister-in-law has decided to stay with her people and be loyal to her God. You should also stay back with her. But Naomi could see that Ruth had made up her mind to go with her. So she said nothing more. They traveled together and finally reached Bethlehem. The people of Bethlehem were very happy to see them. So children, wasn't that a wonderful story? Well, today's question is, what was the name of the town where Elimelech and Naomi were from? It was called Moab. No, silly. They were from a town called Bethlehem. Isn't that correct, Holy? Yes, it was Bethlehem. Moab is where they moved to. Oh, I got confused. There were so many names today. It's all right, dear. Now all of you can go back to singing while I take my nap. Bye, kids. <sighs> Hello, kids. Hi, Holy. It's time for you to tell us another story from the Bible. <laughs> well, I will tell you a story. This is the story of a loyal daughter-in-law, Ruth. Oh, great! Another story about a good woman. I love stories about women. Me too. Today's story is about Ruth working in the field of Boaz. A long time ago, Naomi, a widow, and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, also a widow, had left Moab where they had lived and gone back to their hometown, Bethlehem. They were poor and had almost nothing. It was a custom in Bethlehem to allow poor people to pick up the leftover corn during harvest time. One day, when they had nothing to eat, Ruth said to Naomi, This is harvest time. Let me go to the fields to gather some grain and find someone who will be kind to me. Naomi let her go. So Ruth went out to the fields to gather grains for her mother-in-law and herself. There was a rich and well-known man named Boaz. It so happened that Ruth was in the fields which belonged to him. She walked behind the workers, picking up the heads of the grain which they left. At mealtime, Boaz called Ruth and asked her to eat with the workers. She ate till her hunger was satisfied and then started again to gather grains. Boaz ordered the workers, Let her gather grain 
even where the bundles are kept. Don't stop her. Pull out some heads of grain from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. Ruth worked in the field for the whole day, gathered a large basket full of grain and went back home. Ruth shared food with Naomi and told her that she had worked in the field of a man named Boaz. That was so nice of Boaz. Yes, Tubby. Boaz was a very generous man. So the question today is, what was the custom of Bethlehem during harvest? I will answer the question. The custom was to let the poor people pick up grains from the field during harvest. Very good, Freckles. Now you may go back to sleep, Holy. We shall come back soon for another story. Bye. Goodbye, children. <sighs> Wake up, Holy. Wake up. It's story time. Yes, yes it is. Today's story is about how good things happen to good people. It is the story of a good woman named Ruth and a man named Boaz getting married. Long time ago, there was a wealthy and kind man named Boaz. He lived in Bethlehem. One day, Ruth, a poor widow, happened to go to his field to pick up grains for her mother-in-law, Naomi, and herself. Boaz was extremely kind to her especially because she was such a good daughter-in-law and allowed her to pick up baskets full of grain. Boaz became very fond of Ruth and so, a few days later, he asked Ruth to marry him. The Lord blessed them with a son whom they named Obed. The people of Bethlehem were very happy and they praised the Lord. One of the women went and said to Naomi, the Lord has given you a grandson to take care of you. May the boy become famous in Israel. Naomi loved the baby boy and Ruth with all her heart. Ruth had left her own hometown so that her mother-in-law would not be alone. Ruth had done more for her than even her own sons would have done had they lived. Naomi picked up the baby boy, held him close and took care of him. <laughs> she knew this child would bring new life to her and protect her in her old age. It was because of Obed that the kings of Israel were partly descendants of foreigners since his mother, Ruth, was originally from Moab. Obed had a son called Jesse whose son would become King David. So although the Israelites were special people, God used others as well to carry out his plans. Oh, so now I get it. Obed was King David's grandfather. Yes, so what's the question for today, Holy? Today's question is, what was Obed's son called? Or what was King David's father's name? Obed's son and King David's father's name was Jesse. Excellent, kids. Come on, Gumbo. Come on, Freckles. Let's sing our song. Holy, you can join us too. Please remember higher melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Holy, Jesus whispers sweet and low. The Holy T. To watch more videos, please subscribe. King Solomon sent for his guard and said, Here, take this baby and cut him in half. I'll give one half to each woman. The first woman, who was indeed the real mother, threw herself at Solomon's feet. She cried, Please do not kill the baby. Give him to the other woman, but please do not harm him. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep while the inside of the tomb was flashing like lightning. The guards of the tomb were afraid and very scared. They fell down with fear. The angel knew that the women had come to see Jesus, so he said, You will not find him in the tomb. Jesus has left death behind. 